In 2016, Ben Nevis was re-measured by the Ordnance Survey at 4,411 feet. In this video, we'll test how accurate the altimeter is in the Garmin Phoenix 5X Plus. Now in order to make this test as accurate as possible, I'm going to recalibrate the altimeter in the 5X Plus at sea level. Ben Nevis is within a couple of miles of the coast so this is quite easy to achieve. And one of the new ways of calibrating the 5X Plus range of watches is to use something called DEM or Digital Elevation Model. And this is information stored on the maps within the watch. I wait a couple of moments for a suitable GPS signal and the watch is now calibrated. It's now just a case of travelling a few miles on the A82 to the Ben Nevis Visitor Centre. And to park in the car park here all day is a very reasonable £4. You can pay to park here with either cash or contactless card. The course that I followed started at the visitor centre, which is where you can stock up any last minute provisions. So let's load the course onto the watch. So I select hike, press the up button for options, and then select courses and move down to Ben Nevis. So I'll start the course and now I need to zoom into the map for as much accuracy as possible. So on the map screen I long press the up button and select pan and zoom and zoom into the map. So let's make a start. I go over the bridge and cross the river Nevis onto a few fairly level fields and then over a stile and this is where the ascent really starts. Straight from the start of the walk, the paths are clearly marked out and well defined. This is one of the screens I've put together on my hike app. It shows them at a height of 278 feet and it also shows the maximum and minimum elevation throughout the walk and also the total ascent. Ben Nevis is climbed by around 150,000 people a year, so I chose to start relatively early just to avoid any crowds. On this screen it shows me around about a mile into the journey and I've climbed 522 feet of elevation. Now the number at the bottom of the screen shows how far I am away from the next waypoint or change in direction and the watch will clearly alert me when I'm at that point. I've also set the auto lap at one mile increments. The first mile has taken me 18 minutes 52 seconds which is slightly ahead of the three mile an hour pace that I've set myself. Okay, we're just 1.6 miles into the, the climb and we've done a 1,096 feet and we've got 0.45 miles to go to the next waypoint or the next change in direction. Here's the view from a thousand foot. Looking at the Climb Pro screen, we've got 3.56 miles to go on the course and 3,348 feet left to climb. So far we've climbed 1,103 feet and I've been going for 34 minutes and 50 seconds. And the average gradient we've got on this course is 16%. A 
and Ben Nevis was first climbed in 1771 by a botanist named James Robertson. However, he didn't have the luxury of all these well-laid-out paths. The majority of these paths were constructed in the late 19th century to get supplies to and from the observatory by ponies. And this is how this route got its name, the Pony Track. Okay, 1800. The pass pretty much sort of levels out for a little bit. About 2.3 miles. We've got 0.3 miles to the next waypoint in the course. There's the view of the path in front. So it's relatively, relatively smooth. Not too bad. And we've got another couple of thousand foot to go. My average speed, 2.6 miles an hour. A little bit short of where I was aiming at the average of three. The time of day is 10.09. And we've been going for around about 56 minutes. We've covered 2.4 miles. Here's a view from 2,076 foot. We've done 2.65 miles so far. I've got 0.3 miles to the next change in direction. Uh, weather's still reasonable. A lot of midges coming out, so watch out for that, especially near water. Uh, other than that, the climb's not too bad. Still, the past continues to be well defined and well maintained. Coming up to halfway through the climb, you can see uh, the number on the left is what we've actually done in feet, so 2,166, and the number on the right is what we've got to do, so 2,276. Uh, so cold course, 5.29 miles. I say we're around about halfway through it. Now this route, the Pony Track, was later changed name to the Tourist Path. But authorities then thought that this suggested it was too easy to walk and encouraged people who were ill-equipped and not prepared. It was then later changed name to the Ben Nevis mountain track. If you are looking at climbing Ben Nevis, be prepared for the fast changing weather conditions. You can see in this clip how fast the cloud can roll in. Even though this climb looks relatively easy, I can assure you it's not. Looking at my heart rate on the watch, it's up to 157 beats per minute. Now this heart rate is similar to what I'd compete in a half marathon on the flat with. And you can also see here that I've burnt 655 calories, to ensure you take enough provisions to replace those calories burnt off. In the brief moment the cloud clears, I was rewarded with some spectacular views, so ensure you take time to look around while you're there. I also programmed the watch to alert me once I'd reached the equivalent height of the summit of Snowdon. Now Snowdon is the highest mountain in England and Wales and stands at 3,560 foot. So I've still got another 800 foot of climbing to do. It's at this height the path starts to zigzag its way to the summit. A quick glance at the climb pro screen will show I've only got 0.84 miles to go and 506 feet of climbing to do.
at this stage we're approaching 4,000 feet with only 449 feet of elevation to climb. On reaching the summit plateau, it's important I keep to the set path, otherwise I could fall down one of Ben Nevis's infamous gullies, each with several hundred foot of drop. Whilst we're on the summit plateau, which measures more than 100 acres in area, we pass Britain's highest war memorial, erected in 1965. Just past this, we finally reach the trig point and climb the final steps to the top of Ben Nevis. A quick check on the watch and it shows we've covered 5.36 miles and are at a height of 4,402 feet, which is only 9 feet off the official recorded height of Ben Nevis, so I'd say that's a pretty good result for the Phoenix 5X Plus. Among other features on the summit include a poor weather shelter, and the remains of an observatory that was built in 1883 to monitor the weather. It was manned for 20 years and then left due to lack of funding. For my descent, I take advantage of Garmin's track bag feature, which guides me back down the mountain to the Ben Nevis Visitor Center. During this climb, the Phoenix 5X Plus has proved itself to be an accurate and very useful navigational tool. I hope you found this video helpful. If you have, please like and subscribe for more. And click the bell icon to be notified when new videos are uploaded. And all that leaves me to say is, thanks very much for watching. And I'll see you again in the next video.